Good morning. Welcome to Prince of Peace. Good to be with you. Today is Palm Sunday. Uh, hopefully you have your palm branches as you guys have come in this morning. Uh, as a, a, a note on that, so we will sing hosannas today. We will. This is an exciting day in which we celebrate Jesus riding into Jerusalem. So I'm going to invite you to do this morning, especially during our opening hymn and our closing hymn, I want you guys to get these things going, all right? So as we stand, this is, this is what they did, right? They waved their palm branches and they laid their cloaks on the ground as Jesus triumphantly came into Jerusalem. And so as you come in this morning and as we come here this morning, we also triumphantly wave our palm branches and give thanks to our good Lord who has come to us as we know, as we enter in uh, to this season of Holy Week, uh, as we march to the cross together with Jesus, and then we celebrate together next Sunday, Easter as well. So today, get these things going, all right? I want to see them, all right? Um, sometimes even today is a day, I don't know what Madeline has planned with you guys yet, but today is sometimes even a day where our kids uh, will sometimes even parade around as well as Again, we give thanks for Jesus for coming to us today. So that's what today, uh, Palm Sunday, is all about. Before we get into our worship, uh, a couple of announcements that I would like to, for us to, to center in on. Um, our March collection, collection box, again, this is our, uh, a new collection for us uh, this year, this month, uh, the giving place. You see the items that are needed there. I, I've been noticing our box is overflowing. Thank you for your generosity as you continue to prayerfully consider how you can donate to the giving place. And as you're out uh, this week, if you don't mind picking up a couple of these items, uh, it'll be greatly appreciated. Easter breakfast, again, next Sunday. So we'll have our 8 a.m. service. In between our services, uh, we're going to have an Easter breakfast. There's a table uh, out in the narthex that our fellowship ladies are attending to. Uh, the cost is $5 per adult, ages 13 and up. Um, if this is a... Uh, uh, and $3 for children's 4 to 12, there's a max of $20 on this. So even if cost is an issue, please come and talk with myself or fellowship. We don't want cost to be something that deters you. Um, but if you are able, please come and, and celebrate with us. Uh, celebrate Easter and celebrate in a way of breakfast. And kids, uh, we will have our Easter egg hunt. Uh, the weather's looking pretty good. Pretty good. We'll see. Um, so we'll have that around 9 45-ish, if you guys can be here about 9.30, uh, 9.50-ish, we'll do our Easter egg hunt uh, as a part of that. New Sunday School curriculum starting April 7th. I, I, I uh, announced this last week, a couple of weeks. Um, we are needing some new donation or donations for um, Lego, Lego people, Play-Doh, uh, building blocks. I, I mentioned to you, uh, truthfully, if you have these things in your basement, like your kids are long gone and you still have them in your basement somewhere, please bring them in. Um, if you have dry play leave that at home or just put in the trash. Um, but if you have <laughs> building blocks or Legos, uh, we, we would love to, to have those. We're excited about a new curriculum uh, that is being started again on April 7th. But if you have these things laying around, if you guys could, could bring those in, it'd be greatly appreciated. Our Parent Teen Series uh, starts today, March 24th uh, through June 2nd. Uh, join us for, for coffee and conversation. This is uh, in the library study room uh, next to the, through the, in our education wing, back over there. So if you are uh, willing and able parents, uh, please come in and join us for that as well. Muffins and mimosas. This has been a long time since we've had this. Ladies, this is for you. Uh, this is for all ages of ladies. Uh, this is starting uh, Saturday, April 13th, uh, and it'll be the second Saturday of every month, 8.30 a.m. Uh, in the youth room. Join us for fun and fellowship, uh, again, as they dive into God's Word. They're looking at 1 Corinthians. Uh, so all ladies of all ages, please come and be a part of the women's Bible study, again, starting uh, Saturday, April 13th. And here we are, almost summertime, VBS. Uh, we have our dates. So this is Tuesday, June 18th through Thursday, June 20th. Uh, again, if you have grandkids or neighbors, friends, whatever that may be, uh, please invite them. We're looking for signups. Uh, again, we're fast approaching. June will be here before you know it. Um, and so we, we have our theme and we're excited about it. So please come and, and start signing up and at least getting the word out again to your neighbors, to your friends, uh, grandkids even as well. So come and be a part of that too. 
One other uh, announcement that's not on here. We just found out about this on Friday. Uh, Jill, our secretary, she got the, the job of a lifetime at the library, which sadly means that she is leaving us here at Prince of Peace. Uh, she will be uh, leaving in two weeks, uh, but in the meantime, what we're asking and what we're looking for, uh, we're going to start to put uh, an ad out on Indeed. Uh, this is going to be a part-time position, uh, so if, if any of you would, would be thinking or considering this, uh, please come and talk to myself, to Dennis Weissmantle, to Terry Liu, uh, Todd Brady. So we're going to be in the search and the hunt now for a, a new church secretary. She's willing to, to train. She's, she's willing to to help and, and, again, teach where she can. She's going to put together uh, a manual. Um, we're excited. I am excited for Jill for this opportunity. She's, she's, this is something she has been loving to do. Um, also, I'm very sad um, because of, of who Jill is for our church and has been for our church almost 10 years, nine and a half years. Um, so we prayerfully pray for her, but now we pray for us too as we... Uh, Look to fill our next uh, for our next church secretary. So if you again, if you um, have thoughts or if you are interested, uh, again, please come talk to myself or to um, our executive leadership or even our elders. And as a note, again, um, Emily was here last week. Uh, typically, she now has about two weeks to continue to discern that call. So we continue to to pray for her uh, as she discerns that. I don't think we will know by Easter. I think if she says yes, um, that's, that's kind of mean to her congregation to say, happy Easter, see you later. Um, so we will probably know after Easter. So I, I know that there's been some questions about that. She, again, continue to pray for her. Great visit. Thank you for all of you that uh, were able to meet her and be with her. Uh, but again, prayerfully consider uh, and continue to pray for her as she considers our call the Lord's call here to Prince of Peace. Okay, I'm going to invite you to stand, and we'll share God's peace with one another. The peace of the Lord be with you all. We share God's peace. Good morning again. So I know many of you have been on vacation, a lot of our family, and now we're, we're back together and we rejoice in that. We thank you for your warm welcome and, and of peace as well. 
Uh, what a great way again to greet the Lord this morning as we welcome him, we invite him in to our hearts and our minds as again we parade him into Jerusalem. He comes humbly uh, riding on a donkey for us. And so again, get your palm branches ready because here we go, okay? We begin our worship this morning and we do so. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. to the chorus again. All right. Indeed, Hosanna. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna in the Heavenly Father, today we enter the gates of Jerusalem with the Messiah riding on a colt. He is here because of our sins. He is here so that he may die instead of us. We pray from the deepest parts of our hearts for you to give us healing. Today we begin with songs of praise and waving of palm branches as we hail your son Jesus as the one worthy of all glory, laud, and honor. But then the solemnness of Holy Week also begins. We now come before you and we shift our focus to your son Jesus' path to the cross. 
as foretold by prophets long ago. Jesus was stricken and afflicted, beaten and spit upon, crucified, and he died. He did this out of divine love for all of humanity, taking on himself the sins of all people for our forgiveness. Well, Lord, we come before you as we silently confess our sins before you. Create in us pure hearts, O God. It is because of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we are saved. Amen. It is because of Christ that your sins are forgiven. It is because of Christ we are saved. Upon this, your confession, I as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in his stead and by his command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Zechariah 9, verses 9 through 12. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from river and to the ends of the earth. As for you, Because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to your fortress, O prisoners of hope. Even now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. Hosanna to the son of David. The king who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I invite you to stand for our gospel reading. Our gospel reading comes from Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on, on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Hosanna to the son of David. You may be seated, and I invite our kids to come forward for Kids' Corner. All right, good morning. Gabby. (laughs) All right, I could use your help this morning, but that's okay. All right. We are going to do a word scramble, and I'm going to help you guys, okay, because we've got a young crowd today. So, have you guys ever done a word scramble? No? Okay. Well, you're about to do it for the first time, and I'll help you, okay? We have a bunch of different letters here, and we are going to make a word. Okay. Take a look at the letters, 
This is gonna be tricky, so you let me know if you want help. Okay, this is a word that we're gonna learn about today. You probably have heard it before. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start putting the word together, and as soon as you know it, I want you to shout it out, okay? If you know it. And if you don't, that's okay. Awesome. Who's heard that word before? Yeah? Okay. Awesome. Awesome's an awesome word, right? Well, sometimes we use awesome to describe something, right? Like tacos or maybe video games or like a movie or something. But Awesome actually means something way better than like a really cool thing. Awesome is an overwhelming feeling of reverence, admiration, and fear. Like we are in awe of something. Like if you guys have ever been hiking and been to the top of a cliff or something and seen a really beautiful scenery, like that's pretty awesome, right? Okay, Because it's so much bigger, stronger, and better than we are. And we use the word awesome to describe God. Have you guys heard that? Yeah. Okay. One of the places in the Bible we find this is in Psalm 66, verse 5. It says, come and see what God has done. He is, here, say it with me, awesome in his deeds toward the children of man. And if we use this word for other things like tacos or games or whatever, we're actually kind of using it in the wrong way. Because we want God to be the most, say it with me, awesome thing, right? Awesome. Because God is bigger, better, stronger, and greater than us, right? And all the things he does are awesome. Okay, we're going to put that word away. That one's kind of a long one. So next word, again, if you know it, all right, let me know. Oops, those are sticking together. <laughs> there we go. Has anybody seen that word before? Those are kind of hard words this morning, huh? Praise. You guys heard that word before? Yeah? No? Okay. Does anybody know what it means? What does it mean to praise? It's also kind of a tricky word. Praise means to make much of something. Like we lift it up, right? Like, we praise God. That's what we do while we're here at church, right? We praise God. Good. We praise him because he's worthy of praise, right? We sing about him. We talk about him. We talk highly of God, right? So we're going to hear that word today, too. He's worthy of praise because he gives us life, and he made everything, right? And, like we're talking about today, he came back and sent his son to save us from our sin. So we find this in... As Isaiah 25, 1, it says, Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness, you have done the wonderful things planned long ago. Okay, last word. You probably won't know this one. That's okay. All right. Although you may have recognized it from this morning. So if you know it, shout it out. You got it. Hosanna. All right. Can you say it with me? Ready? Hosanna. Very good. What does it mean? We say Hosanna a lot today, but what does it mean? Does anybody know? <laughs> so Hosanna means hooray, the Lord saves. That's why we say it so much today, because Jesus is riding into Jerusalem, right? Because Jesus is the one who comes back and he saves us. So what does Hosanna mean? Hooray, the Lord saves. Very good. Okay, and we read this verse already, but it's always worth repeating. In Matthew 21, verse 9, And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Okay, one more time. What does Hosanna mean? Hooray, the Lord saves. Very good. So on Palm Sunday, when Jesus was riding into Jerusalem, the people were praising him, right, and shouting Hosanna because our awesome God had sent Jesus to save them, okay? All right, you guys, let's fold our hands. We're going to pray. Go ahead and repeat after me. Dear Lord, Dear Lord 
You truly are awesome. You are awesome. And worthy of all our praise. And worthy of all our praise. Let us not forget. Let us not forget. All the good things. All the good things. You have done. Help us to sing and shout. Help us to sing and shout. Hosanna with thankful hearts. Hosanna with thankful hearts. As we celebrate Jesus' ride, ride into Jerusalem. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Good job, guys. grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who comes riding today into Jerusalem on a donkey. Amen. So again, Palm Sunday. Today is a holy day. Today is a day of celebration. What today actually is, is a parade day. It is a day where we give thanks, and you just can't beat a good parade. I love a good parade, but what I don't really like about the parade is the crowd, the parking, trying to trying to find my spot, and then not to mention, right, because I have young kids, you got to bring your 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 uh, lawn chair, and then you got to bring the cooler, you got to bring the blanket, and then you got to bring all the stuff with you as you park miles away. And then you have to, right, and then after the crowd, you wait in line forever. So the the during is fantastic, but the before and the after, not so much. Now, like you, I've been a part of a a mini parade in my life. Uh, There's many that I I got to celebrate and witness, especially uh, in Texas. Uh, This is one that's in the Fort Worth stockyards where at noon every day they parade down the the Longhorns uh, down the main street there. And then obviously been a part of parades here um, in Ohio as well. Um, Back in December after uh, Christmas, I was at a different parade. I was on a different main street. Uh, This one was in Disney World as they were parading down and coming uh, to us down the street as we uh, celebrated that again uh, over Christmas. But today is a, a good time too. It's another parade day. It's Palm Sunday, and I love Palm Sunday because I feel like it's, it's such a break. We have all this kind of solemn, this, this way of, of coming before the Lord in which Lent should be, and it's a, a time of confessing our sins for us being truthful about our sins. 
And then today, Palm Sunday, we have this day where we rejoice and we give thanks and we praise and we are in awe because of all of the things that Jesus has come to do for us as we know what that is in our lives. And yet we also know what Jesus is coming to this week as well. This week he will come uh, to these last words, these hard teachings, the cleansing of the temple, the anguish, the wrestling in the garden of Gethsemane, the betrayal, the arrests, the beatings, and oh, there will be hell to pay this week, and we know that Jesus will pay that. We can't imagine it all, but today, again, today, there is a break within um, this time of, of Lent. There is a parade, and Jesus is coming to town. But this is not your typical parade, not by any sort of Roman standards. Um, the standards of Jesus' day, this, this wasn't, again, your, your typical thing where Jesus is coming and, and riding on a white stallion and there's chariots and there's trumpets being blown and, and we're giving celebratory things. No, this is, this ain't Jesus. And it's a, it's a different parade. Jesus comes in humbly the word might be better for us today to say gently. As he comes into a cult, this is symbolism written all over it. He humbly comes to us. He, he comes to us and there is a large crowd assembled and they have palm branches and they are rolling out the red carpet. They're throwing out their cloaks before him. And they're shouting, you're the man, you go, man. Blessed, blessed are you who comes in the name of the Lord. And the crowd is growing crazy and, and they would not and they could not be silenced. And Jesus, Jesus is just in the middle of all of it. He's enjoying it. He's enjoying the parade. And he's enjoying the people. Imagine him, right? Right? Children are, are waving at him with smiles on their face, and, and Jesus is smiling and waving back as well. As they're waving their palm branches, as they're throwing their cloaks into the ground, and they're shouting at him, Hosanna, Hosanna, save us now, O Lord, you have come to us. And Jesus, he's just taking it all in. He's enjoying the parade, enjoying the favor for one enjoying the, the crowd, enjoying the smiles, enjoying all of the people. Well, not all of the people. You see, I would think that the crowd's probably a mixed crowd for sure. The Pharisees and the rulers, they seem to hate Jesus at this point. And then there's a whole bunch of people who really didn't know what to think. So you've got people here who are waving palm branches, and you've got people in the back kind of with their hands crossed going, I don't really like this guy. Or you know what, I, I'm not really sure um, about this guy. I'm not really quite sure what to think yet about this, this prophet who's coming into town. In our passage from Matthew this morning, Matthew writes, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? And the crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And so they see him as a prophet, yeah? To see him as someone who is important, that is good, but no, really, no one really notices or no one really points out, this is the son of the living God. This is not what they proclaim. This is not obviously what they shared. No, no one mentions him as a redeemer, the one who has come to make everything new. No one sees or no one really gets fully why Jesus or understands really what Jesus is up to today and what is really going on. They're looking for an earthly ruler who is coming to crush the Romans, who is coming with sword and is ready to, to take on the fight. But that ain't Jesus either. 
You see, they didn't get it. They didn't really understand. He is not that kind of king, and they didn't realize that it would be through suffering on the cross, that through his shed blood, that through his death and resurrection, that Jesus came to crush Satan, not the Romans. They just don't get it. They just don't understand what brought Jesus into Jerusalem. And what I think is awesome here, Jesus doesn't just stop the parade. Jesus doesn't just put down the mic and get off the donkey and tell the crowd, hey, I need you to to be quiet because you don't really understand what's going on here today. No, Jesus doesn't do that at all. Jesus goes, you know what? I will take your praise. Even though you may not understand what's going on here today, I will still give thanks and and rejoice in the praise that I am receiving today. Because the thing is, in just a few short days, not only are you going to be shouting, uh, you're going from shouting praises, in a few days you're going to be going to shouting lies. Instead of waving palm branches, you're going to be waving your fist in the air and telling, crucify him, crucify him. And no, there won't be any sort of cloaks being laid on the ground. Instead, there will be spreading of lies that will continue to happen in just a few short days. And instead of riding on a colt, he's going to be carrying a heavy cross up the hill behind him. They will flog him, and then they will nail him. But who could really understand that? That he would go willingly and to suffer and to die for them and for us. And from the cross, he will say, Father, forgive them. I do not understand what they are doing. Put all their sins on me, Father. See, he becomes guilty, which... He is innocent. He switches places with us so that we could be the 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 ones that we and be that we what we could never be, which is sinless and faultless before the throne of God. The Savior liberating power sets us free from the condemnation of our sin, free from the sin of our past, and free from the worry about our future as well. This, friends, is the gospel. That is the love of Jesus, that he would lay down his life for you and for me. And the Bible says that it surpasses all human understanding. That cross, that instrument, that death becomes our joy. The cross gives us reason to celebrate because it's not the end of the parade. This sadness begins our Easter gladness. Now, I know many of you perhaps play the March Madness brackets with with basketball, and I'm sorry for all of you whose brackets are already busted. Mine is as well. But this week, we enter into a new kind of March Madness. Today starts a, a day of madness that is going to continue for the rest of this week. As we look at Maundy Thursday of Jesus giving us his body and blood in the upper room with his disciples. And then on Friday where Jesus goes to Gethsemane to the garden and where he is arrested and then later beaten and flogged. And then later carrying again the cross up the hill, the madness, a different type of March madness, which begins today. And yet in this madness, He is making all things new. When Jesus comes for that last parade, then we will finally understand and we will finally get it. But for now, we keep the faith, believing and trusting in that in which is to come. But we're not left clueless either. The disciple John was told to write it down. It's a tip-off found in the back of the book. And it says this from Revelation. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne in front of the Lamb. And they were wearing white robes and were holding, hmm, 
palm branches. Palm branches in their hands. And at the very end of this, they shouted, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen? Amen. you to stand if you are able as we go before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience, and be made partakers of their his resurrection. By your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness and adversity. Lord, we lift up to you again, Emily. Lord, continue to be with her as she discerns and considers the call here to Prince of Peace. Lord, we also pray for her church there in heavenly hosts, Lord, that the ministry would continue, Lord, and the Lord, that you continue to bless them and be with them. Lord, we lift up to you and give thanks and praise for Kathy Smith, a friend of Vicki Trammell's, who was given a clean bill of health. Lord, continue and be with the Neuer family. Who, uh, the Neuer family, Corey lost her, her, her father, John, and Lord, we ask that you continue to be with them, Lord, that you bring your comfort and healing. And Lord, we continue to pray for all the wars that are happening on this earth. Lord, especially in Russia and Middle East and in Ukraine, Lord. Lord, we pray and ask for comfort and recovery for Janet and for Kathy and Gary and Deb, Gary, Eileen, Tyler, Lucille, John, Al, Kathy, Kathleen, Justin, Bill, and Anissa. Lord, you know what is going on in their lives, and Lord, we pray for healing and for peace, Lord. And Lord, that as you are a good physician, that you would come to them and be with them, Lord. Lord, we also pray for those who are suffering from cancer, for Angie and Jeff, 
for Michelle, for Joyce, Joe, Nate, Lynn, Donald, Rocky, Tara, Jerry, Rebecca, Maurice, Bob, Steve, Kathy, Andy, Melanie, and Katie. Lord, that in their battle of cancer, Lord, that you would come alongside them and knowing that they're not alone and that you are standing with them, Lord, and that you are guiding them through all of their ways. Be with those who suffer persecution for the faith. Bring consolation to those in sorrow and grant to all a measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us now profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and I am Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As you enter into this March Madness week, into this Holy Week, where we give thanks and rejoice and celebrate our Savior who has come to us, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. 